Hey folks, Professor Finn here, and today we're going to be looking at funeral service licensing and education here in the state of Florida. Now, what this presentation is, is an explanation of the funeral licenses that are available to individuals here in the state of Florida, as well as some of the licenses that are available for firms. An explanation of the different educational opportunities available that are the prerequisite to these licenses, and some of the pros and cons that come with maybe the type of education you're choosing or the type of license that you wish to seek. So a little bit about me before we begin. I am the program coordinator of funeral service education at Miami-Dade College here in Miami, Florida. I am a licensed funeral director and embalmer in the state of Florida and have been for over a decade. I'm a graduate of a Florida mortuary school, St. Petersburg College in St. Petersburg, Florida. And I'm also a member of the American Board of Funeral Service Education. Uh, that organization we'll discuss just a little bit later when we talk about your education and why that's important. So first and foremost, the death care industry in just about all the states is a regulated industry. Here in the state of Florida, the Florida Department of Financial Services is the department which handles funeral directors. Specifically within the Florida Department of Financial Services is the Division of Funeral, Cemetery, and Consumer Services, which operates the day-to-day -day administration and enforcement uh, of the funeral service administrative codes and laws. Whenever you are looking at any sort of professional degree or professional licensure, it is important to find the source of the information for that state that governs it. Here in the state of Florida, Florida Statute 497 governs just about everything funeral service. Now there's a couple of other places where some stuff is hidden, some administrative codes, a couple of other statutes, but 497 contains all of the funeral director qualifications and the different types of licenses. So let's talk about this first license, the licensed funeral director only. Well, this licensee must possess a minimum of a two-year college education. The individual must also have completed a course in funeral service education or mortuary science. And what this has generally been interpreted to mean is that you must have completed either a mortuary degree or a college credit certificate in funeral service education or mortuary science. You must also pass the state board examination or its equivalent. And an equivalent exam would be the national board exam arts must pass a Florida laws and rules examination, which you will see for any of the full licenses in the state of Florida. You also will have, have to have passed a two hour communicable disease HIV course from an authorized provider. And you will see that again for all the licenses and must complete either an internship or you must be endorsed. And we will talk about that just a little bit later in the presentation. Now, with the licensed embalmer, you have a subtle difference here. You must possess a two-year degree or equivalent in mortuary science or funeral service education. For this specific license, the degree in the subject matter must agree with one of these two items. You must pass an examination similar to the National Board Exam Sciences section. Now, there is no Florida State Board Exam for the sciences. So you cannot be a licensed embalmer only by taking a Florida State Board exam. And once again, you see you have to take the laws and rules examination, the two-hour communicable disease course, and have completed an internship or been endorsed. You also have the combination funeral director embalmer. Well, you have to have the requisite education. And generally for this degree, you must have completed a two-year degree in mortuary science or funeral service education. You must have passed a communicable disease course and must complete both sections of the national board exam, arts and sciences, or a similar test. 
the Florida State Board exam is not sufficient. Now, you might say, hey, Professor Finn, um, why does it say you must have completed requirements for an individual license and completed a program in mortuary science? Well, Many years ago, about maybe the 1970s, the 1980s, there were uh, mortuary schools that are still in business now. And when you graduated, you received a mortuary diploma. The diploma is not an equivalent to a two-year degree. It is simply a mortuary diploma. So in the state of Florida, if you have a mortuary diploma that you earn in the 1970s or 80s, you must also have the minimum two-year education uh, in some way, shape, or form. So you must have the degree in any subject in addition to the diploma. Uh, this gets people in some hot water that have been practicing for years in other states who want to come to Florida. They've had a mortuary diploma for three quarters of their lives, and now they're told, well, if you don't have the two-year degree, you can't get licensed here. And that, unfortunately, is the law in the state of Florida. You can see that you must pass the laws and rules exam, and you must also do the communicable disease course as well as have completed an internship or have been endorsed. One of the licenses unique to the state of Florida is the direct disposer license. The requirements for this license is that you pass a mortuary law class, pass a college ethics course, you must also be a high school graduate, which I didn't put on the list, but it is implied that you must have completed high school or received a GED. You must pass the Florida Laws and Rules Examination. The limitation here is that you can only work at a direct disposal facility. You cannot work at a licensed funeral establishment. The direct disposal establishment is a specific facility license. A person that is a licensed funeral director or a combination funeral director embalmer can choose to act as a direct disposer. If you are only licensed as a direct disposer, as of 2010, you can no longer manage a direct disposal facility. So if there is a change in ownership, the person that is going to be in charge of the firm must possess a funeral director only license or the combination funeral director and embalmer license. So you have seen for the majority of the licenses an internship is required. In different states, this is called different things. In some states, it's called residency. In some states, it's called an apprenticeship. In other states, like this one, it might be called an internship. The more proper term would be an externship because this is performed at either the completion of the mortuary education or it is performed after the education is done. But what this is, is for individuals coming into the industry. You serve is in a one-year capacity, 50 out of 52 contingent weeks, under the supervision of a licensed funeral director, a licensed embalmer, or a combination licensee. This is important because interns have their own licenses. So if you are only wishing to practice funeral directing, you will be a funeral director only intern. If you wish to only practice embalming, then you would be an embalmer only intern. If you wish to practice both, then you must do a combination funeral director embalmer internship. And the good news is if you wish to do both, you can do them both at the same time under an approved training agency. This was not the case early on in the state of Florida. Back in the 50s and 60s, you served one and then you served another. So you spent two years after mortuary school doing internships and learning the art better. In 2019, the law was changed. Anyone wishing to do either a solo internship for funeral director or embalmer, as well as the combination license, may serve those internships after they have completed a certain percentage of their schooling. 
Should something happen while you are serving in your internship, the board may authorize an extension, but you must contact the Board of Funeral Cemetery and Consumer Services, and they must approve it. Now, another specific license that many students get, and I was one of those individuals who had this license, is the Embalmer Apprentice. This is a three-year non-renewable license, and if you are in school, it can be extended to five. But once it expires, it has expired. While you are an apprentice, you must be directly supervised. You cannot work by yourself. You must have a fully licensed individual, not an intern, supervising your activities while you are in the prep room. In the state of Florida, the embalmer apprentice does not serve as a prerequisite to any other license. Again, back in the day, that was different. You served an apprenticeship for a year in order to be certified to go to the mortuary school. Then you went to mortuary school. You came back from mortuary school and you served one year as a funeral director intern, one year as an embalmer intern, and finally you could get your full license. That system from the 1950s and 60s has long since changed. No matter which license you are looking at, from the intern to the full license, all of them require a fingerprint background check. A Florida license in funeral service may be denied simply on a person's character. You do not necessarily have to have been um, found guilty of crimes. However, if you have a history of bad moral character, return checks, too many accusations of crimes, the Florida board can look at the entirety of the situation and make a judgment call. You must be 18 years of age, and you must pay the appropriate fees. Now, with funeral firm licenses, we're going to talk briefly about just some of the more important ones that will affect you uh, as either people going into the industry or maybe a consumer wondering what type of firm you're walking into. So the first one we're going to look at is a licensed funeral establishment. This is a full-service funeral facility. The state of Florida does require them to be 1,250 square foot at a minimum, and this was a newer requirement, I believe, in 2010, so you can be grandfathered in if you have an older facility. You must have an embalming room, a preparation facility, and if you do not have one on the premises, you must have a contract with an embalming facility. As of 2019, a combination licensee must be in charge if you have an embalming room on the premises. So you must be a funeral director embalmer if you have the embalming room on the premises of your establishment. If you do not have an embalming room on the premises, the funeral director only license is permitted to be a funeral director in charge of that facility. So a Funeral director only can be listed as the funeral director in charge. That was a major change to the law in 2019. At a funeral establishment, you may arrange and perform the entire spectrum of funeral services. So let's talk about the direct disposal facility. Direct disposal facilities may only perform direct cremations. There is a minimum size of 625 square foot, and they must have refrigeration facilities on the premises, or they must have a contract with someone to provide their storage for them. That is important. They are not permitted to embalm on the premises. They cannot have a prep room. You cannot arrange for embalming at a direct disposer. As of 2010, the person in charge of a direct disposal establishment must either have a funeral director only license or they have to have the combination funeral director embalmer license. 
the only thing direct disposers may do at a time of a death is they may collect the information for the death certificate and they may collect information for a newspaper obituary. The state of Florida says after a certain amount of time, they may assist in other limited areas, but a direct disposer cannot at the time of arrangements do anything more than collect information for a death certificate and collect information for a newspaper obituary. They cannot schedule memorial services for you. They cannot contact churches for you. They cannot arrange for third parties to participate in your funeral services for you. Those are things that are limited to only funeral establishments. There are some other facility licenses out there, such as refrigeration facilities, uh, incinerator facilities, uh, central embalming facilities or preparation facilities, removal firms and visitation chapels. In general, these are not things consumers go into immediately. Um, these are things that either full licensees or funeral director only licensees need to be in charge of with the exception of the preparation facility and removal firm. Preparation facilities must be uh, supervised by either a combination licensee or an embalmer only licensee. And removal firms do not necessarily have to have a funeral director in charge since they perform no consumer um, level tasks. They simply assist in the transfer of decedents from their place of death to licensed establishments for disposition. Now, in order for you to become a funeral director, as you saw, you must have a requisite level of education. So let's talk a little bit about that. The first thing is most states require that your education comes from a school that has been accredited by the American Board of Funeral Service Education, or the ABFSE. Now, this degree program can be called Mortuary Science or Funeral Service Education. The name is not so much important as it is that it is accredited by the American Board. The American Board of Funeral Service Education regulates the curriculum that all accredited schools must use. Earlier in this presentation, I said I am a member of the Curriculum Committee of the American Board, and I have served in that capacity for the last five years. And I am very intimately familiar with the curriculum that the schools must teach from, and I have been responsible for ensuring that my program covers all the bases. So let's talk a little bit about the common degree offerings that you will see. The associate in science degree is generally the traditional mortuary science degree that people have received through the years. Now in some states, and there are a limited number of states out there, they require a four-year degree, a bachelor's in science. Uh, in mortuary science or funeral service education. For those states, you would have to have a four-year degree in addition to the traditional mortuary program. Or you go to school in that state and they will have a mortuary science or funeral service education four-year degree program intended to meet that requirement for licensure. The associate in science or the four-year degree will cover both the practice of embalming and the practice of funeral directing. You will learn about the sciences, microbiology, pathology, anatomy, embalming, restoration, and you will also learn funeral directing, business management, marketing, merchandising, religions, everything you would need to run a funeral facility. In most states, this is the requirement uh, to possess full licensure. Some schools will offer certificates. Well, these certificates are relatively new and they will lead to limited licensure. You could be a funeral director only that only meets with families and takes services out. You could not embalm. You may want to be an embalmer only who just goes into the back, preserves and restores human remains, dresses, caskets, performs cosmetic touch-up, 
but never meets with families and never goes out on services. Generally, the certificates will cover one aspect of the education, but not both. In most states, the certificate will lead to only the limited licensure. Most mortuary schools will permit a student, if they complete one certificate, to come back and finish the remainder of their education if they wish to obtain the two-year or full four-year degree in one of those states that requires that. So should you start with one, you could come back and finish the other. So which one is the best for you? In closing, if you are interested in researching any of the Florida statutes or other administrative codes, I have provided you a list of them here. Um, if you wish to visit uh, the regulatory agency's website, you see that the Florida Department of Financial Services is available at www.fldfs.com, not .gov, .com. From there, you can find the Division of Funeral Cemetery and Consumer Services uh, within their larger menu and find lots of information regarding the funeral uh, industry here in the state of Florida. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, feel free to throw a comment in the uh, comment section below. Go ahead, click and like the channel so you can get more information regarding the funeral industry and mortuary science education. This is Professor Finn signing off. We'll see you in the next video.